Hey guys, uh, this is Dooley. Uh, in this video we will look into how to pass data uh, to a thread when you start it. So there are a couple ways to do this. Uh, the first way is to use uh, lambda expressions and and uh, uh, pass the argument uh, uh, arguments. You can pass several arguments like that. And there's also an, an old way where you would pass the argument in the start function. And because you're doing it that way, you have to write the function you're passing to the thread in a different way, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is write, uh, uh, we're going to try to do it using the lambda expression. And uh, the first thing we're going to do here is write the function to do that. So I'm going to write some simple function that's, that takes an argument. So private uh, static, well, it's going to be a... A very simple function it's not going to return anything let's just call it print okay and it will take an integer and let's call that count okay so all I wanted to do is just uh, whatever number is passed in here I want it to print uh, something that many times okay so let's just grab the name of the current thread and then print actually let's start the for loop okay I less than count I plus plus okay and let's do that So that right line. Let's do some string interpolation here. Let's grab the name and then print the uh, current count. Okay. All right. So that, that's all I need for this function for now. Now let's just uh, go ahead and create the new thread. Okay. Let's go. And then let's pass the lambda expression that's going to uh, carry uh, the count argument. Well, first of all, I could uh, uh, create a, a local variable here that will carry the count. Let's just call it number. Let's give that a value of 4. Okay. All right, so let's create our lambda expression. And this lambda expression is just going to call print. Okay, and print is passed in number. All right, that's that. Let's give that thread a name. Let's call it child, child one. Okay, so we've created our thread. Uh, next thing to do is to start it. Okay, so if we run this program, what we expect is we're passing 4 here. So we expect this function to print the name of the thread running, which is child1, and 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so let's go ahead and print that. Oh, that's a figure. Ah, there's a problem here. This is just I. I'm not interpolating that. So let's fix that. Okay. All right. So now we got the count. All right. So what if we were printing the main, you know, printing in the main, doing something else in the main function? Let's call that uh, with number as well. So again, same issues that we've we've spoke of will come up here. You will have parent thread printing and child thread printing. The order will be weird. We won't understand, you know, what's going on in there. So again, we can use 
this locker here which I've already initialized and just lock the critical part of this right here so we want to so what we want to do is make sure when a thread enters this for loop uh, no other thread can come in so lock the locker okay and we want to put this for loop in here Right, so this should fix our order issue. All right, so, all right. So parent, you know, you still will will have the, you know, will have either parent or child comes first. But whichever comes first is going to stay in order. All right. So uh, let's look at the other way of passing arguments to a thread. So this way was using a lambda expression. This other way, uh, which is an old way, because uh, that was before uh, lambda expression existed in C sharp, uh, which is around uh, C sharp three or something. So um, let's write the function, and the function will look almost exactly like this, except that uh, we are going to pass an object instead. Okay, so let's drive it. Static void. Let's call it print two, and let's just pass in an object. And let's call this count object. Okay. The only thing I want to we will chain in this function is we are going to create a local variable which I'm going to call count and we want to cast the object count into an integer okay and the rest of the function is pretty much the same See, pretty much the same. So we have our thread already. So instead of now passing a lambda expression, she's going to call the print function. Let's just pass print, print two, and then now inside the start function, we want to pass number. Okay. So this it will have essentially the same effect. Okay, so you have parent and child being printed. Okay. All right. So this is this video. So what uh, we looked at today was uh, um, how to pass arguments to threads. Uh, we used uh, a lambda expression to do that, uh, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, and uh, we've looked at how to do it uh, using uh, uh, the start function of the thread. And the reason you can do that is because the, the thread start function has two, uh, I believe thread.delegate has two overloads. And uh, one of them, you know, that just a thread start and the other one is called param parameterized thread start. Uh, which uh, which takes an object so which is why we were able to do this right here all right so uh, go ahead and, and subscribe if you want to know when these videos are coming up uh, please like the videos and uh, if you've got questions and comments uh, please go ahead and don't hesitate and uh, uh, I'll see you next time all right guys bye